Hey everyone, I'm Russ Frustic, and today we're going to be talking about microtransactions within Destiny 2. It's very confusing. Uh, it's hard to follow. There's a lot to take in. It's way more complicated than it was in the first Destiny. So I thought I'd walk through some of the basics of what you can buy with real money, as well as the things you can find in these items and where you could avoid spending money. And we're also going to open a bunch of these, I guess they're called bright engrams, um, using real money so you don't have to, so you can gauge whether it's actually worthwhile. So, microtransactions are all focused around these items called bright engrams. You can see one right here. Um, you can buy them with real money, or as you level up in Destiny, after you've hit the level cap of 20, you will earn one per level up. Level ups happen, I would say, roughly about every one to two hours of gameplay. So you get a fair number of these just by playing the game. Um, but if you're looking to amass a whole crap load in a very short period of time, you have to buy silver, which is the in-game currency. Um, we spent uh, $50 and bought 5,800 silver, uh, which seems kind of crazy. And with that amount of silver, uh, we're gonna open a bunch. But first, uh, let me just talk about what you can find in these bright engrams. So if you go to Tess Eververse, Te her, sorry, her name is Tess Everis. Uh, she runs the Eververse, which is very complicated. And you hit preview on any of these items, you can see uh, the possible things that can show up. So we're talking about uh, armor and ornaments and ghost shells and emotes and mods and shaders and ships and sparrows. For the most part, uh, these are cosmetic upgrades, but uh, mods and things like that actually do have gameplay implications. Um, there are some exotic sparrows that are very quick that I guess have some minor gameplay implications. Um, and, but most of them are um, ornamentals uh, that just change the look of a gun, for example. Uh, that you're not actually getting the gun, you need the gun to uh, be able to use the ornamental, but again, it's all cosmetic. Um, within this, you can also get shaders. Now, this is a point of serious contention. People are not very happy because shaders uh, are one-time use. Uh, you'll get a pack usually of three of a given shader, but if you want to change out shaders on a piece of armor or a gun, uh, you will actually have to lose, you're basically burning that shader and you have to use another one. So uh, those are a uh, very big point of contention, something that the community is very, very unhappy with. Um, emotes pretty much work as before. Uh, they start off with pretty basic stuff like that, just the pointing and yeah. And then um, you can get something a little more complex like dancing. Of course, later on, there's gonna be exotic emotes with all sorts of detail and stuff like that. Uh, we can actually take a look at an, uh, an example of an exotic emote. They have these new like neon artifacts on them. There's my character making some neon ramen and eating it for some reason. Sure, why not? Um, so there are exotic uh, emotes as well. All this stuff you can get, again, out of bright engrams. Uh, just by playing the game, you will get free bright engrams. But if you want a bunch of them and you want a chance at decent drops, uh, you're going to need to spend some money. So we've spent some money, uh, and, and, and we're going to start jumping in right now. Uh, we're going to start with this silver starter pack. This is a one-time bundle. Uh, it contains a bunch of shader, one-time use shaders, some bright dust, which I'll talk about in a second, and bright engrams. There's three of them here. Um, so we'll pick that up and, and uh, go from there. Okay, so we've got a bunch of bright engrams here, and we'll open one of these up. So first bright engram, we got uh, a ghost shell, we got a shader, and we got a Vex Arrival Transmat effect. So I wanted to talk about Transmat effects for a second. Um, ships are more customizable than they were before. Um, you can now customize not only the shader on a ship, you can see me changing the shaders here. You can also change the transmat effect. Effectively, what that means is your um, respawn animation, when you respawn after death, uh, will change depending on uh, the uh, transmat effect you have up. Right now, I have sort of a crucible uh, logo that appears, which is kind of cool. We just unlocked this Vex Arrival one. Unfortunately, I can't preview these, but suffice it to say, they're pretty cool, and they customize uh, things when you respawn. We also got a ghost shell. Um, this ghost shell is, has does some stuff on Titan. 
uh, increases glimmer on Titan, stuff like that. Ghost shells no longer have power, so these are um, just minor upgrades to your character, but for the most part, they won't impact, say, your overall power level. All right, so we're going to open a few more of these maybe a little bit faster, and we've got a um, legendary, uh, that is a, uh, what are they called, Sparrow, as well as another Shader and some other things. So there's a, a Sparrow. This Sparrow is 160, and Sparrows now have little perks on them. We can see one Sparrow here has a, a, a increased agility, and this Sparrow uh, takes a little shorter to respawn, which is kind of nice, or to summon, which is nice. Okay. Let's open another one. Oh, right. So we got uh, an exotic emote, Flip Out. Uh, flip Out, if I recall, is this table thing. So there's a table, and I flip it. Yay! <laughs> um, that's kind of neat. That was it, right? Th those were the three. I think, yeah, those were the three that uh, we bought. Um, we also got the shader, the Suros shader, which I think you can only get from that pack. Let's see, where is that? Here we go. So, Suros shader. Here we go. It's very white, very white, and black, which is sort of the Suros way. Uh, you can see that you can put shaders on guns now, which is kind of neat. Let's see it on this piece of armor. Yeah, kind of a white, very white look. All right, so uh, we're down to 4,900 silver. Uh, we're going to open a pack of five bright engrams. This is 800. Again, I would not recommend spending money this early in the game, but we're yeah, just trying to show you whether work. it's worth it or not. Uh, there are ways to do all of this stuff on your own. Uh, we got some cool shaders and a, uh, what is that, down to business ornament. Um, all this is all. There are all ways to do this. All of this on your own. Just playing the game, you will earn bright engrams. You will earn uh, emotes. You will earn all this stuff um, just by playing the game. So definitely, do not feel obligated to spend money. Uh, I would not recommend rushing out and spending money right out of the gate. Just enjoy the game as you level up. Um, I kind of forgot what I just earned there. Uh, I don't remember what that was. Something. Oh, it was a shader. We got a, a new shader. Let's see if we can... Oh, I guess you can't put shaders on swords. Drag. We'll put it on this helmet. So, let's see. Midnight Talos. Indigo Matrix. Ooh, very purple. There's a few more of these. Arctic Pearl, I think, is what we just got. All right. So, we've got uh, four more of these to open. We got some boots. Now, this is important. Boots. Uh, you can get armor from this, which sort of seems like, well, that's a big gameplay implication. But actually, the armor comes in at 10 power, effectively. Uh, and you would have to infuse it to make it remotely worthwhile. Um, why would people even bother? A lot of this stuff is good to have just by nature of like, well, you like the look of it. Or you need another set with like a different role on it. But for the most part, there's really no reason... To use armor, unless you uh, armor from the Eververse, unless you uh, like the style of it, and you can see again how much the shaders really do impact the d the design of uh, these things. Um, okay, let's open another one. All right, so we got a ship and a shader and some mods, and I'll talk about mods in a second as well. So let's take a look at this ship here. That's a very cool looking ship, very futuristic. Some neat shaders there. Um, I wanted to talk about mods. So mods uh, are items that you can basically attach to guns uh, or armor for that matter. In this case, um, you could say, let's pick uh, this gun here. And we, we could attach this arc damage mod to change the arc type to it or avoid damage mod to change the, the damage type to it. So. It's a good way to, if you really like a gun, but you don't like the uh, style of it, you can change the damage type of it. Now, if you're upgrading, say, a legendary, you're going to need different gear and stuff like that. So mods are very important, but again, you will be getting a lot of this just by playing the game. Looks like we've got another exotic uh, emote, which is exciting. Um, 
Let's take a look at that. I think it's me sprinkling salt. Salt. There you go. It's like a little magic dust. All the exotic engrams, uh, emotes, I should say, have um, kind of uh, effects to them. So it'll be like a neon or, or sparkles in that case. Uh, we also got a new shader. So let's take a look at that. I don't remember what it was called. I keep forgetting the names of them. Okay, and some new ones. Okay, let's take one more of these and then let's take a break. Oh, I got sick as an emote and a shader and two more uh, weapon mods as well. So here's sick. It's me feeling sick. Pretty predictable. I'm sure that'll come definitely in handy. Not a problem. Um, that's kind of the nature of everything that you get from here is like, it's kind of a crapshoot and none of it is really going to be that helpful in gameplay. This is all cosmetic stuff that really is not mandatory in the least. Um, speaking about um, dust for a second. So if I go back to th this menu, you'll see these things on the bottom here. Uh, some of them I already have. So you're the guardian I already have, but it says at the bottom, bright dust and a cost to it. Um, so, if you're not down with the whole RNG nature of the Eververse, you can actually spend Bright Dust. Uh, bright Dust comes, you can get it out of uh, Bright Engrams, you can get like a pile of Bright Dust. Or if you salvage stuff like a ship or like uh, an emote, for example, you'll get a little bit of Bright Dust that you can then save and then spend on specific things that like you really, really want. Like, a, again, an ornament that you really like the look of. The idea of this is, again, to sort of cut down on some of the RNG frustration of it. Um, and if you're patient enough, you'll see the thing that you want and you'll be able to buy it outright, which is nice. Um, it's kind of similar to the uh, system that is Thanks in um, Overwatch. So if you've played Overwatch Red and you know the system with, with coins, it's actually really slightly bad. more okay. generous in the sense that um, you can... Uh, even It doesn't have to be a duplicate to get coins out of it, in this case, dust. Uh, if you have something that you just don't want, you can immediately dust it and then save those, have save I that dust to be spent elsewhere. Defended his title um, the last thing I wanted to talk about was auras. So there's been a lot of question about um, specifically shaders and the fact that they're one-time use and people are very upset. No one seems to like that they're one-time use, which I agree, honestly. I don't think it's a good system. I do think Red Legion have made it the customization uh, will be okay. mostly focused around auras now, uh, which we haven't seen. They're nowhere in the game, uh, really. There's like a little hidden aura in the farm, but Anything beyond that, uh, this you can see this area is, uh, is locked, and it says that these are visual effects awarded for completion of challenging activities. So figure... Raids, hard mode raids, raids flawless, who knows, something like we'll that. Same um, and next. what I would imagine is these are like dramatic auras that surround your character. Maybe it's like a glowing halo around your head or your hands glow or your feet glow or whatever it is. Um, so these are going to be kind of the equivalent of the shaders that people earned by finishing the raids. Whereas the secondary shaders, these consumable shaders, just um are just sort of found all over the place. You can get them in chess, you can get them in Eververse, obviously, which we've seen. So there's a lot of sources for those. I don't think it's great because it does discourage me from using shaders because I want to like save them until I have something I really, really want or Red like. Um, but again, that's sort of how the process really? works. Oh, so uh, to sort of answer your question, should you spend money in Destiny on these microtransactions? These it's really up to you. I would recommend probably waiting but if you are dead set on getting every possible cosmetic thing in the game, um, Eververse, you know, spending a little money on the Eververse, or a lot for that matter, is going to give you a whole bunch of those things very, very early on. If you're looking to be playing Destiny 2 for three years, however long it lasts, uh, chances are you're going to be getting almost all this stuff just naturally by playing the game. So I would not stress majorly about whether you've gotten, you know, that amazing... Uh, emote that you really really like like don't stress about it. It's cool uh, You will probably get it just by leveling up and opening bright engrams Anyway, if you have any other questions about um, uh, Microtransactions feel free to leave them in the comments I'll try to pop in there and uh, answer them wherever I can but in the meantime. Thank you so much for watching We'll be back with more destiny content real soon